All right, so we just got to our next stand and there's a box sneaking up on us and he's right there. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Hunter Classic. This is the Hunter DD33 and today we're gonna to be trying to find a non-typical mule deer buck with a bow. Now we're out here on Timbergold Trails and we're gonna be heading to a couple of my favorite bow stands for some mule deer, but we do have a buck grunt right now from a mule deer right behind this tree. We just spawned in, so we're gonna have to lay here prone on this rock and see what it's gonna be. Oh, there he is. Ooh, he is taking his time to come in. Uh, it's been about 15 game minutes now, and he is definitely taking his time to come in. There's not too many trees up there, so I don't see why he'd be coming in so slow, unless he's a decent sized one. Normally when they come in really slow like that, they're either really nice or they're super small. So it could be a 200 plus or it could be a 50 plus. Well, it appears that he's super tiny and he's not going to be a 200 plus. So we'll take him out with the reverse draw crossbow. But it is a buck, so I'm not complaining at all. We actually pulled a little bit to the right side of him that time, but definitely got a lung on that. Let's go track him down. And here he is down right here. He actually ran a little ways, a little further than I was hoping, but at least we got him. Let's pick him up. Got a single lung hit on him at 11.2 meters. He scored 122. He actually looked a lot smaller. I thought he was going to score maybe like 80 or 90, but not bad for the first buck of the hunt. So we just realized that we didn't have the right camouflage gloves on. We actually had these swamp camouflage gloves on, and um, we didn't have full camo. So we went back to the tent here to get some uh, Hirschfelden style camo, which will be perfect for uh, Timbergold Trails. And we actually got a call from another buck right here, and here he is crossing the river. It looks to be like another 120s, 130s buck. Let's take a look. Yeah, another 120 buck. That's exactly what he is. Coming right across the river. Just as pretty as a picture. So as we're sitting here waiting for this buck to come in, I'm going to show you kind of our plan of action. What we're going to do is we're going to go from here. We're going to work our way to this stand and to this stand and come back to here. And we're going to kind of circle back and come all the way. And we'll continue on, go to this stand here, work our way to here. And we're going to kind of continue this circle pattern all the way around. Every about 15 minutes, you want to continue this circle because if you stay in one stand the whole time, there's a good chance the buck's going to cut across over here when you're here and you're just gonna make your odds a lot better if you keep moving every about 15 minutes or so. All right, so we have this buck here. He's about 40 meters out. Only problem is he's coming right towards us, right in the water, but that should be all right. We should be able to get either a neck bone or shoulder and double lung, especially if you turn just a little bit. I like that. Yeah, perfect, dropped him. So the reason we took the shot as he was walking because he was more broadside that way and it's a better chance that you're gonna get a double lung hit if he turns broadside versus trying to take a single lung hit as he's coming straight at you. So let's go pick him up. Should have been double lung. Really cool looking rack. He sort of looks like a, a white tail in a way from this angle at least. Let's pick him up. We ended up getting shoulder blade and double lung liver shot. He scored 120.6. All right, now we're gonna head our way over to the first stand and we'll get set up and see if we can't get ourselves a nice buck. So what I like to do is put out a call as soon as I'm about 60 meters away from the stand, go crouch, put out a call, walk a little bit, and then put out one more call. That way if there's any bucks in the area, they should grunt back and that will give you plenty enough time to be able to crouch and then finally prone into the stand without them seeing you. All right, so we just got into the first stand and we put out a couple of calls. But what I'm noticing is that there's a ton of wolf tracks here. So if you get in the stand and all you see is a bunch of wolves, you should probably reset. Although this is a nice one. Oh, got him. And it worked out good because we used an orange tracer on him as well. Let's pick it up. And this one scores 15.4, pretty decent sized wolf. So pretty decent sized wolf, except the problem is I think we actually shot the wrong one. I'm pretty sure the other one was bigger. If I'm not mistaken, it might have been the biggest one, but there were so many wolves coming through, I just couldn't really remember which one was the one that had the highest score estimate, but we decided to take this one, and we got a wolf down. Now, this is an excellent spot for big mule deer and non-typical mule deer, but the problem is, if you come to this spot when there's a bunch of wolves in the area, they pretty much overtake this whole area, and all you're going to see is wolves and possibly um, grizzly bear. So basically, what I would do if you see a bunch of tracks like this and wolf fleeing tracks, there is a couple of does nearby, but that's about it. That's just some wolf food is all it really is. So what I would do is I would reset and come back to the same exact spot 
and hopes that there isn't going to be a whole pack of wolves here. So we just got back up in the stand and this time there's no tracks around. Well there is a couple of mule deer tracks but there's no wolf tracks all over the place. So we're going to wait 15 minutes and hopefully a buck will come in. The good thing about waiting 15 minutes is even if we spooked a buck, he will be unspooked within about 15 game minutes and that's why I say 15 game minutes um, to sit per each stand minimum. Once you start seeing bucks, you're going to want to stay there a lot longer and you can sit there for up to 3-4 hours if you want. Alright, we just got a buck run right underneath us. We were sitting here for about 8 game minutes, never heard anything and a buck just grunted right underneath us so I don't know what it is, but that was pretty cool. And that's why you need to sit here at least 15 game minutes because they sneak in so fast and you don't even know it. All right, this looks like a small buck actually. Another one of those 120 bucks. He could be in a group though. There might be another buck with him. We had a track from a 110 to 135 kg buck head of this direction as well, but it looks like this buck is, oh, there's a wolf over there. Whole pack of wolves. Every time there's always wolves here. It's like this whole area is overrun with wolves or something. Oh, another buck. Another buck over there. That's another tip too. If you're sitting here for like 10 or 15 minutes, you don't see anything. Go down this direction towards the river about 30 or 40 meters away. Put out a call. And a lot of times you'll be able to call them in from this other side over here. I can't quite tell what that is. It looks like uh, uh, it's another 120s um, mule deer. So it looks like there's two 150 bucks and a 120 buck right here. The only bad thing is we don't have any cover scent, but we should be all right as long as we don't move around too much. That's the good thing about these stands is you're pretty, you're pretty hidden for the most part. We just keep looking back this way now to make sure that there's another big one coming. All right, so I think we're going to take a shot on this buck here. I don't see any other big bucks coming in at the moment and he's a max weight, so I don't want to accidentally track him. Perfect shot dropped him. Yeah, there's a good chance I would pick up that track somewhere and want to track him down and think he's going to be a huge 200 plus or possibly even a non-typical when really he's only going to be like a 140s buck, which is not a tiny one, but at the same time, he's nowhere near 200 plus. Got a shoulder blade, right lung, heart shot on him, and he's going to score 144.0. So I'm pretty sure we're about to get attacked by this grizzly bear, and I thought you guys might want to see this. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, here it comes. Oh yeah. Oh, nice shot. And here it is down right here. So yeah, it. Uh, I would imagine we got intestine and, and stomach on it. Hit a little bit high. Let's pick it up. It was a female we got. Oh no, we did get liver. We got intestine, stomach, and liver. So we're just approaching our next stand and we just got a call from a buck right here, about 80 meters away. So we're gonna go prone and get ready. All right, so at this point, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a shot on this buck here because we don't see any other big ones. Yeah, a couple of scrubbers is what it looks like. Take this one. And dropped it. So they're gonna flee off that direction there. That'll be fine. We're gonna go to the next stand over here and hopefully these little bucks don't follow us. All right, let's pick them up. We got spine two and spine one and he scores 124. All right, so we just got to our next stand and there's a buck sneaking up on us and he's right there. Oh, that's a nice buck. 160 to 185 score on him. 105 to 120 kgs. That's definitely like a 170 plus mule deer. He could be 180s depending on how many deductions he has. But this buck snuck in, never even made a sound at all until now. Let's see, we probably aren't even gonna have a track from him. Nope, completely new trail. So what happened is we came over to the stand and we checked over here and there's a buck way over here. This one is about 270 meters out. And I figured, well, let's try and get his attention, get him to come in. So we were putting a couple calls out and I heard something coming up behind us. And sure, it's a nice mule deer. I was thinking it should be a 180 plus, but since the score estimate only goes to 185, we'll give it like a 179. Let's take a shot. All right, so I couldn't really see it very good, but that's almost even better because now you can see the tracer sticking out of them. Really cool. Definitely made a solid hit on them. Let's take a look and see where he's headed to. 
See, the problem is if you don't watch him when he's running like this, it's going to be almost impossible to track him through all this stuff. So it's been about 15 game minutes now, and here is our big buck down. Let's take a look at him. You can see the tracer sticking out of him there. Super cool looking, and let's crouch down and take a better look at this buck. Shoulder blade. Yep, exactly what I thought. He scores 179.3, so that's a pretty cool picture right there. You can see the tracer. You can see the buck. So we just got over to this tower stand setup, and we have a decent buck coming in over here. He looks like a 150s, 160s buck. And there's also a wolf, of course, right there. That is a pretty big male wolf. And it's black, too. I kind of want to get this wolf. This could be a 16-plus wolf. All right, the wolf's coming in. He's about 70. If he gets to here, he'll be 60 and we'll be able to take a shot. And we don't want him to come any closer because he's big and he's smart. Oh, got him. Solid hit on him. Let's watch him. He's actually going right over towards that buck. Probably going to spook that other buck. Yep, that buck took off, but that's all right. We got this big wolf hit hard. He should go down. That might have actually been an intestine or a liver hit. All right, so we got a body hit on him, but he'll go down. We'll give him about 20 game minutes and go track him down and go find ourselves hopefully a mount or black wolf. That would be pretty cool because I don't have any 16 plus. Um, black wolf mounted and I, I would like to get one really bad. All right Well after about 25 game minutes of tracking this guy We found him down right here and you can see our shot was maybe about an inch too low I think we actually hit right below the heart, but we still got him So let's pick him up and see what he's gonna score And we hit him at 56.5. Yes Finally, I have my first 16 plus black wolf. I've been wanting a 16 plus black wolf since the wolves actually came out and the fact that we just got one now, that's really, really cool. I'm, I'm very happy with that. And we're going to get him on him for sure. That. Perfect. All right. I really like that trophy shot. Let's go with that and let's get him mounted. All right, guys. Here we are back at the trophy lodge. And here is our 16.0 scoring black wolf. And this is the first 16 plus black wolf that I've managed to take. And especially to be able to get him with the uh, reverse draw crossbow. That was pretty cool. I wish there was a way you could turn the whole mount so you could see him more like a broadside view. But for now, I think we're going to keep him sitting down like that. That's a cool pose there too, but you can't see him from this angle. The only way you could see him is if you went over to there, uh, to that side. And maybe you could see him from there. But for now, let's just keep him sitting down. And that's pretty cool like that. And I think that's going to be a pretty good way to end this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time.